Am I the asshole for kicking my best man out of my wedding for his gamer talk about my fiance? I, 35 male, am engaged to May, 35 female. My best friend, Andre, 35 male, is the best man. Fake names. First, details. May is a huge anime and gamer nerd. Like, huge. We're all gamers, but she has like every system under the sun and loves playing video games, including the retro ones like Tetris and Sonic. She's also into MMORPG like FFXIV and JRPGs like the Tales of series and games like My Time at Portia and Animal Crossing. May and Andre have always gotten along, but they never actually hung out near video games together. I had him and two of our other friends over for a couple beers and cigars. Andre heard May turn on her switch, and he asked if she had Super Smash Bros. She said yes, and Andre said, let me show you a thing or two, in a joking manner. I warned Andre that he was going to get thrashed, to which he made the comment, girl gamers don't scare me. No, May did not hear him. Well, May suited up with Yoshi, and she annihilated all of them without trying. They asked her to change characters. She went to Young Link then Peach then Jigglypuff then Roy and lastly, her favorite character, Ness. Creamed all of them. Now, I'll admit, my friends have short tempers with gaming. I could see they were frustrated, so I proposed we do something else. Everyone except Andre was done with the games. He proposed they play Tetris, free on the Switch and already downloaded. And, once again, Andre lost. Hard. Like, extra hard. Painfully hard. To put it short, he got completely thrashed. May won first place in two-player every game. Andre stopped playing and they all went home afterwards, annoyed. I don't think May noticed. Later on, Andre and my friends invited May to a game of Rainbow Six. May gladly accepted and chose her favorite, Frost. They played the private party matches and she basically was always the last one standing. May told the guys she was going to take a bathroom break and put her headset down. I asked May if I could play the next round. She agreed and I put on her headset only to hear my friends talking trash about her. They were saying things like, why are girls such tryhards, and, she's good at gaming but I bet she couldn't make a sandwich. Now, they didn't know I was there so I spoke and told them to shut up. Andre laughed and said they were, just joking, and I said that's not funny and what if May came back and heard them. He said it's just, gamer talk, and I said it wasn't. Andre told me I was being an ass and dragging down the group. He also told me they wouldn't be talking smack if I told May to stop trying so hard. Long story short, after an argument, I kicked Andre out of the wedding. I turned the PS4 off. When May asked why it was off, I said the others got off, but I didn't tell her what they said. Our friends were saying I was overreacting and they didn't mean it, but I honestly don't care. It just made me so mad. Am I the asshole? Did I overreact? Edit. I do plan to tell May what happened. This only happened last night, and she's at her mom's right now. I plan to tell her tomorrow. You're a good fiancé. You did what was right even if she doesn't know it. Speaking of which, I would definitely tell her. Because she might play with them again and they might tell her a completely different story. One where you're the bad guy. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. Not sure what part of the controller they are trying to operate with their penis but it obviously isn't giving them the advantage that they think it does. But tell her. ASAP. Not the asshole. Those guys are misogynist sore losers. I bet that if they had gotten beaten by a guy they would have admired him, but because the gender of the person they happened to get beat by was female instead they have to put her down in order to bring themselves up above her where they feel they belong. Why have people who don't respect your bride up at the altar? He got caught being extremely disrespectful to your fiancé right before your wedding, and now he can't wrap his mind around why he can't come to it. Not the asshole. Not the asshole wow, girl gamers just can't win. If she lost they'd be talking about how girl gamers suck and when she wins it's because she's trying to hard, lol. I bet those guys were putting in like 10x the effort she was because they're sexist Oz. Not the asshole. And you don't have to tell May to stop trying so hard. It sounds like she wasn't even breaking a sweat. Not the asshole your friends are sexist sore losers. Not the asshole. You're totally right to defend her. They are being sexist because their egos are hurt by a woman being better at games than them. You handled it really well and you were right to call them out. I'm glad you're so proud of May's talents. Your friends sound nasty though in this instance. Maybe set boundaries so they don't do anything like this again. Edit. I think you should however explain to May why Andre was uninvited. She might get bothered that he would say that, but I reckon she'll be happy to know you have her back. 
Am I the asshole for canceling my daughter's birthday and making her call her classmates to explain why? Here is the situation. My daughter Abby just turned 11 and was supposed to have a birthday party last month with the girls in her class. She is autistic and has a DHD that we haven't found the right treatment for, so she struggles to make friends and this would have been the first non-family party she has had. In the last few months, Abby went to two other birthday parties where the whole class was invited which is why she asked to have a larger friend party this year in our backyard. Unfortunately because of the timing, Taylor, her best friend, wouldn't be able to make it because her family was out of town. The day before the party, I was letting Abby use my phone to give her classmates the time and location information and I overheard this exchange. Other girl. Is Taylor going to be there? Abby. No, she's lame and can't come. I sternly told Abby to hang up and explain herself. She tried to tell me that she wasn't serious, but I thought it was incredibly mean to call her only friend, lame, and felt like she was behaving horribly. She insisted that it was just a joke and wouldn't agree when I told her that Taylor would be heartbroken if she heard Abby call her lame. I felt that she didn't deserve to have a party if she couldn't cherish her friend, and decided to teach her a lesson. I made her call all 12 girls that were invited, including the ones she had already called to tell the information, and explain to them that there wasn't going to be a party after all, because she was being punished for saying something rude about Taylor. She was appropriately embarrassed and cried a lot, and I think definitely learned her lesson. So I felt like this was done and dusted, but Taylor came over last weekend for a sleepover and I talked to her mom for a bit at drop-off. She told me she heard about what happened because the other parents had been discussing my punishment and thought it was too harsh, and insinuated I should go easier on Abby because she was, a sweet and sensitive kid. I wasn't expecting this so I brushed it off until she left, but got annoyed that other parents are judging me for my actions when my kid did something that was not sweet or sensitive. When Taylor's mother returned to pick her daughter up, she again laid it on thick how much Taylor liked Abby and how she was glad they were friends, and I said, yep and now Abby knows to treat her friends well and not to take them for granted. It got awkward when Taylor's mom kept gushing about Abby and low-key implying that she didn't deserve to be punished and I snapped back, well, I guess you and everyone else knows how to parent better than I do. I am still seething over this and want to know if my actions with Abby and with Taylor's mom were warranted, because I feel like everyone else is taking crazy pills. Edit. I have said in multiple DMs but I will say here as well that I was wrong and I am disgusted with myself. I will clear up that Abby does go to weekly therapy, but we haven't seen a psychologist or done family therapy since she was 8. I was also suspected of having ADD as a child but my parents didn't do much to investigate after one type of medication failed to help so I don't think about it that much and don't know if that's relevant. I sat with Abby after supper and apologized for my actions and enforced that she is a good kid and a great friend to Taylor. She started tearing up and told me she was hurt that the other girl asked about Taylor because apparently some kids had said they wouldn't go since Taylor wasn't. Abby felt guilty because while she was just joking about Taylor being lame, she was hurt that they liked Taylor and not her. I hadn't even considered this and I'm heartbroken for her that I kicked her when she was down. She is a sweet and sensitive girl and I'm very lucky she forgave me. I will be looking into family therapy and connecting with the school to fix this and told Abby she has a week to decide how and with who she wanted to celebrate a belated birthday. Thanks to everyone who advocated for my daughter when I failed her. You are the asshole do you have zero knowledge of kids this age? They all call each other weird names. Lame? Nope, no one would bat an eye. You miss someone's birthday party, they will kiddingly use this terminology. You went so far past the line it's unbelievable. You are the asshole that's a pretty standard thing for kids to say and taking away her birthday celebration and embarrassing her in front of peers is not good parenting. Even if she was rude, don't think she was. Did your punishment succeed in teaching her about social interactions? Or did it teach her to just make sure you can't hear her conversations? You taught her that someone else's perception of other people's feelings were more important than her friendships. You are the asshole that's such a ridiculous overreaction. You went immediately to the nuclear option when a simple discussion about unkindness and a I don't want you to talk like that, would have been sufficient. My daughter has trouble making friends, so I humiliated her and cruelly cancelled a friend event to teach her a lesson about not being unkind to other people. WTF. Here's what a sensible parent would do. Hey Abby don't call your friend lame, okay mom, she deserves a gentle nudge you knocked her across the room. You are the asshole.
I don't usually comment on am I the asshole posts but this one angered me so much. You are the asshole. So 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 much. I make fun of my friends as a joke. So many kids and younger people nowadays do. It's a completely normal thing. Maybe you misunderstood because of her tone of voice as she's autistic. But if she already struggles with friendship you're so shit for doing that to her and I genuinely pray this is fake somehow. You embarrassed her and cancelled her b-day for such a light-hearted comment. You are the asshole. You are the asshole. Wow what is wrong with you? Not only is that a pretty innocent statement, it's a normal thing for a child to say and your child is neurodiverse. And you cancelled her birthday and humiliated her in front of all her classmates especially when she find it hard to make friends already. You are a nut job. And clearly don't care because everyone is telling you you were way too harsh and you still don't believe them and even act it out. Yes they do know how to parent better than you. This is some Kanye levels of nonsense. You are the asshole. She struggles making friends and now you're hindering that even more. The correct thing would be to have her tell the friend on the phone why Taylor actually couldn't come and that she wasn't lame. Just couldn't make it cause she was out of town. ETA. Also you're judgmental as fuck saying all the other parents are taking crazy pills cause they thought you were harsh. You need to call all the parents and apologize for saying they're crazy when they're looking out for your daughter. Wow you are the asshole. Are you crazy? When people say that someone is being lame, it's not a real insult. It just means they're doing something else and you wish they weren't. It's not serious at all. You massively misunderstood what she meant. You then went on to humiliate her and ruin her birthday. She insisted that it was just a joke. Exactly. She told you and you just chose not to believe her. Way to be a jerk. She will remember this. Am I the asshole because I marked off my old tenant's mail as no longer lives here? We used to rent out our basement but our family has grown so we needed the space. So we gave our tenants six months notice to move out. This was over two years ago that they moved out. The tenants incorporated a business using our address a month before moving out and never told us. It was a random name and FedEx packages came to our door that I refused to take because there was no name. I was afraid we were getting scammed. Tenants informed us when they noticed the tracking of their packages and told us then. So I accepted their business packages for the time being. Anyway when they moved out we asked them to change their address so they get their mail. For one year, their mail still kept coming but no FedEx packages. I texted saying, please get your mail but please change your address. After one year, I have started marking their mail, return to sender. This person doesn't live here, I don't text them anymore. Last week, a FedEx package to their business arrived at my door and I refused it saying, we have no business here, IDK what that is. I'm not taking it. The old tenant texted me a few men later cursing saying, why did you send my effing package? I said, you don't live here anymore. Stop sending your mail to my house. I think they may have been tracking it. He texted back, but you have always texted me. I live in an apartment now and I work during the day so I can't get packages. I have to drive to FedEx and it's an hour away. Just take my package. I said, no, I won't. Update your address. My husband said I should just help out because they were good tenants, but I refused. It smells scammy to me and I don't like that their business is still listed under my address when they don't even live here. Am I the asshole for refusing to help pick up their packages delivered to my house? Not the asshole. The former tenant can very easily get a P.O. box at the local post office and get packages there. Not the asshole it does seem scammy that they incorporated a business at your address a month before their six-month notice to move out was to expire. It screams of some kind of fraud being perpetrated. Regardless, if the former tenant wants a mail drop spot, UPS has locations that sell mailboxes for just that purpose. Not the asshole. If they wanted you to do them the courtesy of continuing to accept their packages, they should have done you the courtesy of asking you for the favor, not expecting it and then cursing at you when you didn't so not the asshole. They've had more than enough notice to get their shit together. I don't know what country you're in, but I'd check what address is registered to their business, in the UK it's company's house, and if it's still yours, notify whatever authority you need to, to get it changed. I'm sure they were lovely tenants, but you don't want bailiffs turning up at your door. For one year I texted saying, please get your mail but please change your address, but you have always texted me, not the asshole. They've ignored you telling them to change their address for a year. They're even lucky you did it for a year. Normally it would be acceptable for you to not accept anything for them at all ever since they left your building. It smells scammy to me and I don't like that their business is still listed under my address when they don't even live here. Exactly. 
They don't live there they don't get to have the privilege of using your address unless they pay. Not the asshole. Even if there is nothing sketchy going on it's incredibly rude to continue to use your old address to get your mail delivered. Even when the occupants have repeatedly told you to change your address, just because you won't be home to accept your packages. Not the asshole. You are not obliged to handle their stuff. Not the asshole, after two years? Wow. Your old tenant has some nerve expecting you to be their free UPS store and then getting mad when you declined. Lol. To be paranoid, it's a little worrisome that they'd be putting someone else's address on some of their deliveries. At this point, I think I would open the next package of theirs that came to my house because I didn't realize it wasn't ours. Make sure there's nothing illegal inside. I wonder if they're hiding purchases from their partner? Am I the asshole for telling my significant other that his daughter cannot come over to our new house until we meet up again? Me, 26 female, and my significant other, 32 male, have been together for 5 years and he has 2 children with his ex Anna, 31 female. They have Leo, 8 male, and Lee, 14 female, together. Me and my significant other decided to wait until we were dating for 1 year for me to meet his children. We met up for lunch at a local restaurant, and while Leo liked me, Lee didn't speak a word. I assumed she was not ready to warm up to me just yet. After that we scaled back to brief video calls, where she wouldn't say anything. This went on for another six months, then me and my significant Other moved in together. Leo came every other week for visits for the first month, and Lee never came. She told significant Other she didn't want to be around me so she wasn't going to come for visitation. So my significant Other did visitation at his sister's house. This worked out okay. It was just awkward because his sister lives 5 minutes away from our old apt and the kids lived 20 minutes away from us, so it was a lot of driving back and forth. This has been the arrangement for years. The entire time I've been inviting Lee out, through my so, with us to get to know her better. We go out at least 4-5 times per month and do various activities, parks, museums, zoo, malls, go-karts, restaurants, everything. Leo tags along sometimes but Lee has never came. March 1st I closed on my dream apartment. Three beds, 2.5 baths, study, huge balcony, it's gorgeous. We've moved in and I'm so excited to start making our home here. I posted a video on social media and Anna seen it and showed Lee. Anna blew up my significant other phone asking him when he was going to tell Lee that he moved. He did tell Lee, she said, oh, okay, after Lee seen our new home she asked significant other when she would be able to come over and decorate her new room. I told him under no circumstances will Lee be allowed into her new room until she agrees to meet us outside for an outing. I love her because she's my partner's daughter, but I don't know her. I've only ever heard her voice in videos she posts to social media. She has never spoken a word to me. My significant other is incredibly sad because he just wants his daughter to visit him again, but he agrees with me. Anna and Lee obviously disagree, and so does my in-laws. Am I the asshole? Esh. For the past five years, everybody has agreed to let a child, she was nine at the beginning, decide if, when, where she wanted to see her father. Also, if you bow that apartment with your so, his daughter has every right to come whenever she wants as it is also her home. The adults need to do better by that child. Not the asshole you've never actually met the girl. Dot how weird she wants a bedroom in your, not yours and your so's, you own it, home. She's never stayed the night with you there. It's reasonable that you want to meet and talk with her at least once. You're not framing it in a shitty way either like you want to take her out for ice cream before heading to Ikea or something, and you're open to one of the rooms being hers. It's a bizarre situation. Not the asshole. Perfectly reasonable in the circumstances. She's had many years to build some relationship with you. She doesn't get to have space in the home of someone she's been utterly rude to. Your partner needs to explain that to her. And be careful. You may have been with your significant other for a number of years but if this home has be purchased solely by your funds, make sure you have a cohabitation agreement or your local legal equivalent if there's a chance these children might decide it's so nice they want to live there. Sounds like she cares more about the bedroom than meeting you. Lots to unpack here. I love her because she's my partner's daughter, but I don't know her. No, you don't love her. You cannot possibly love a sullen teen you've met once, who treats you like dirt. You're four years into this, and she still won't deal with you at all. Sorry, but this isn't going to work out. Can't tell what's wrong, but she is going to hate you forever, and you need to move on. She asked significant other when she would be able to come over and decorate her new room. 
I'd be skeptical of her sudden newfound affection for your home. This could go wrong in a lot of ways. Not the asshole. You're asking for a minimum standard of courtesy to be met before Lee claims a room in your home. The adults in her life have allowed her to snub you for the last several years and now expect that she gets her own room in your home. My feeling is, as the step-parent you and Lee don't have to be good friends or have a warm relationship or go out of your way to spend time together, and the discipline should be left to her father. But you have a basic right to be treated politely and respectfully in your own home, not cold-shouldered or ignored, and it's best to set that expectation from the beginning. At this point you have no reason to suppose that Lee will treat you any better than she has so far. Not the asshole. I hate to be that person but Lee is at that age where she could do major damage to your life. You don't know her by her choice, and now that you have something new and shiny she wants to come around? Trust has to be built before people are allowed in your bubble. Nah. I would suggest looking into a therapist for Lee. Having a neutral third party to help her navigate this would be a good thing.